In this class we want to talk about the classical approach to management. Now, the classical approach to management emerged during the 19th uh, century and continued into the 20th century, but in truth it's still with us. Uh, its influences in management and management thinking can be seen today as it was in the past. Due to the new challenges that organizations faced in the past, management sought methods of efficiency which included a rational and scientific approach. In the 19th century, new technology was being introduced very rapidly. It's not the same as the new technology of today. This was engineering technology in, in the main. But it was being rapidly introduced in the factory system in terms of production had been adopted from the time of the Industrial Revolution. However, um, to, to meet the requirements of the new technology, engineering in the main, to meet the requirements of that, management sought ways which fitted with that approach. And uh, during the 18th century, the 19th century, and the 20th century, but particularly the 19th century. People were very interested in science and in the scientific method and the scientific way of thinking. So um, a scientific approach to management was sought, a rational and scientific approach. Now if we look at management practices uh, within uh, an organization, well the classical management theory suggests three scientific management, the administrative principle and bureaucratic organizations. Now we'll look at bureaucratic organizations in a separate video so I'm mentioning it here because it is part of this trilogy but uh, we will deal with that separately. Now the classical approach um, includes the three following contributors and we'll look at each of these in turn so there are three contributors well in fact I'm going to leave Max Weber and bureaucracy to a separate video so in fact we're going to deal with two here but um, so we'll look at two main contributors in this video and the other one in a separate video so the first one we're going to look at is Frederick Taylor and Taylor's contribution is very interesting because he is the person who developed the idea of the scientific approach to management. Scientific management, or sometimes called Taylorism, was a scientific method which was used to optimize the way in which tasks were performed and thus improving the labor productivity. So Taylor's emphasis was to try and increase labor productivity through a systematic study of labor practices within the organization. So looking at jobs and trying to optimize the way the jobs could be completed and looking at how the work was structured. So Taylor's emphasis was much more on measuring, measuring tasks in terms of time and effort and looking to see how how it could be done faster. One of Taylor's philosophies was that in the past man must be put first, in the future the system must be put first. It's quite a famous way of looking at it and, and that crops up often in management writings. What Taylor here was saying is that the individual, the individual worker, was less than the system. It was the system that must be managed and all the individual workers were just contributing to the system. So it was managing the system that was important for Taylor. Now the general concept of scientific management, well, develop a standard method of performing a task and train workers to use these methods. Um, managers develop precise procedures based on 
organizational tasks. So you, the manager, I should say, develop procedures based on organizational tasks and look critically at these tasks and the procedures and try to optimize, try to make them most efficient and then train the, uh, the workers in the use of the methods and thereby encourage greater productivity. Make sure that the workers have the proper tools for the job. Without the proper tools they would be inefficient. Selected employees were chosen for specific tasks. Worker, workers that were stronger both mentally and physically were assigned specific tasks. So the workers were separated out according to their ability, their physical ability or their mental ability, because that was the best use of the resource, according to Taylor. Wage incentives were provided when output was increased. Employees were motivated to increase their output with the use of additional benefits. So there was an insist incentive system. The more they worked, the more they were paid. So the system was based on measuring the task, fitting the tasks together efficiently, and using the resource most efficiently. It was very much a scientific approach to management. It was based on calculations, based on observations. Now the disadvantages of scientific management. Well, workers felt exploited because their social aspect of life was disregarded. Workers were treated as machines, not humans. They were part of the production process. In fact, they were only there because machines could not be developed to perform the tasks. The human body is very flexible. Uh, to build a machine with the same flexibility was way beyond the capacity of the engineers in the 19th century. And indeed, to this day, I think. So, having people perform the tasks was the obvious solution. But the people were organized in a way like they were part of a bigger machine. They were all contributing towards the output of this big machine. The big machine being the production system. Management stereotyped workers and did not allow them to prove their skills in other areas. So once a worker was assigned a task, that was the task. That's the workers could not move, could not could not change. They were assigned that by management and they were that part of the if you like the industrial system. They were that part of the industrial machine. They must perform that task. They can't just walk off and start performing a different task. There was no job enrichment. There wasn't a wide set of tasks. It was a very narrow task. They were not allowed to perform in innovative ways to perform their tasks. They must follow the guidelines and the guidelines are what management set out. So their job was to do it exactly as the management said. There was no scope for innovation or for change. An immediate disadvantage out of all of this as you can see is the sheer boredom that the workers would have experienced. They were doing the same task repetitively over and over and over. That's very dehumanizing. As as human beings, we like to show our creative side. We like to have some sort of freedom and some sort of flexibility. And the more freedom and flexibility we've got, the better the quality of our life. Further contributions to scientific management were made by Henry Gant. Uh, Lillian Gilbreth and Frank Gilbreth. Now let's uh, turn to a, a 
different contributor to this idea of uh, classical management. As I said, we're going to deal with two here. We've looked at Taylorism, now we're going to look at another one, and Bureaucracy and Weber we will look at in a separate video. So, <coughs> Henry Fayol, um and the Administrative Principle. This theory dealt with the entire organisation, both workers and management, which functioned within four basic principles. And these are unity of command. Each person receives order on, uh, an order only from one superior. So there is no complexity in the system. There is no ambiguity. Each worker has one manager, one line manager perhaps, who deals with that worker. And that worker only follows directions from that person. So there is unity of command. There is one person in charge of that worker. The one person may be in charge of perhaps a number of workers, depending on the task. And then the person who is in charge of them may have it may report to somebody above him or her as well. But the point is, it is a unity of command. There is division of work. Specialization and efficiency were in, uh, incorporated in workers. In other words, the, uh, the work was broken down into small tasks. And each worker knew exactly what was required of him or her. So that there was a division of work. And there was unity of direction. Related activities were grouped under one manager. So there was organization in the sense that tasks that were related were grouped under one manager. Under that manager there would be division of work between the, the workers and a unity of command so that each worker reported only to one manager. But the work itself, the, the what needed to be done, once there was commonality between the tasks they were grouped under one manager. And that's what's known as a scalar change. Um, in other words, it starts from the CEOs, or the CEO if there's one, uh, depends on, on the, the form of the organization, there might be several divisions, right down to the laborers, to the workers. So there is a line which can be traced from the individual worker to the perhaps individual CEO in one business, if it's one business. Now the administrative principle, well, the five basic functions or elements of management, uh, management processes are planning, that's a task that must be completed by management, organizing, that's an administrative task, organizing the business, controlling the business, so it's planning it, it's organizing it, it's controlling it, it's coordinating it, enabling all the parts to fit together. Not just planning and organizing, but it's actually the coordinating at the end to ensure that all the parts fit together and there is a smooth output. And similar to controlling, there is a commanding uh, element so that top down are able to control all the parts within the organization to ensure that they all not just fit together and work smoothly but any changes perhaps that are required are easily implemented and identified so it is a top down further contributions to administrative um, principles were made by uh, Mary Parker Follett emphasized uh, common goals of the employees in reducing 
organizational conflict and helped management to gain the trust and respect of the employees. So um, the idea there was that there was a common goal. The workers needed jobs, they needed income, and the management needed the workers. So there was uh, a relationship between the two that meant that they were working together, they, that they should pull together. There was a sort of a, a common theme. Chester Bernard uh, introduced the concept of the informal organization where management and subordinates group informally to create a bond. Um, and there is that within organizations that even though the organization attempts to be very formal and structured there is also um, informal parts to the organization because simply formalizing everything, formalizing every single procedure would be inordinately difficult for management. So there is still scope for the employee to to deal with things, to deal with the tasks uh, in his or her own way to some extent. It is very difficult to be totally prescriptive about what is required. So we've looked at two. We've looked at the administrative principle and we've looked at the scientific management idea and uh, bureaucracy uh, being the third one uh, that will come in a separate video. So for now that's all I want to say about these issues so thank you for watching.